How do we, how do we get people to pray for us? We pray for others first. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The Bible describes in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 that those that gave, that it stirred up thanksgiving unto God and that the people that received their gifts began to pray for those who had given. And the Bible declares it a wonderful gift. I tell you, don't consider prayers as just trivial. Let's go and begin in Luke chapter 22, beginning at verse 31. Today I want to talk a message called, I prayed for you. In Luke 22, verse 31, it says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat, but I have pleaded in prayer for you Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said, Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you and even to die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even knew me. This past uh, Friday, I was uh, speaking at a, a worship meeting, and, and before, I had, before I went to the worship meeting, I went and get, got my hair cut. And uh, I had to correct my wife a few weeks ago. We were, we were uh, in, in Washington, and she said, uh, you know, you need to get your hair cut. You should go to one of those really, you know, like spa-like places and uh, what spa-like places? Yeah, the, the, where they just like take care of you and they cut and they, they do massage. And I, where's that? You know, a barber shop. To my wife, the barber shop like is luxurious. I said, you haven't been to many barber shops before. <laughs> but uh, I, I went to uh, uh, sports clips, and uh, I think that's the most fanciest I get there. I get the little. You know, since I was going to speak, I got the MVP. That means they wash your hair too. <laughs> and uh, the girl that was, was cutting my hair, she said, we got a special. You get, uh, for the price of the one MVP, you get two hot towels. Two hot towels? Wow. I feel special. Don't know what that means. She just removed the first one, and then she put another hot one on me, and wow. But when I walked in, and, and I sat in the chair, and she began to cut my hair, the Lord spoke to me, and he says, I just want you to pray for her. So as she's cut, normally, I just close my eyes. I'm like, do your best. Whatever comes out, comes out. Amen. But this time, I closed my eyes, and I was just praying in the Spirit. Just kept on praying the whole time. She washed my hair, and after I was done, I looked at her, and I said, I need to tell you, God had me praying for you this whole time. I just want to let you know that God is with you, God is for you, and you are blessed. She, she was... She, received it and she was just thankful you know and and it was a beautiful moment i mean it's a beautiful moment to know that someone was stirred up by god to pray for you one of the saddest things i've ever heard there have been people that we prayed for just during the week just we meet them and the lord speaks to us and, and i'll ask them can we pray for you and they'll say yes and we'll pray for them i remember one man 40 years old and we prayed for him, and the whole time he was just crying, weeping, not little tears, but deep travail tears. And afterwards he said, I'm, 40, I'm 41 years old, and you're the very first person that's ever prayed for me. We have a whole generation that have been living separated from God. And understand that there's a lot of research and a lot of 
you know, some of my ideas, but a lot of kids who didn't grow up in, in knowing God didn't come to church. Before the generation, uh, a lot of the parents were divorced, and the parents, because of the shame of divorce, they didn't want to be around God. Or maybe they were going to church, but then they got divorced, and they separated themselves and pulled themselves out of, of being in church, so the kids never grew up hearing simple stories in the Word of God or learning how to pray or hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they grow up with this brokenness, they grow up with this pain, they grow up not knowing, they, they go for the drugs and they go for all those things because that's all that the world has for them. But they don't know that there's healing, there's deliverance, there's freedom, there's salvation through Jesus Christ. And that's why we have to tell them. That's why we have to preach, amen. Let's not ever get angry at someone because of their, their brokenness. We should be the ones that say, Lord, use me to bring healing to them as I tell them how good you've been to me. Amen. And so I, I just prayed for her and I blessed her. Jesus talked to Peter and he said, listen, you're going to go through something. You're going to deny me three times before the rooster screams. But I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when you repent and come back, strengthen your brethren. Jesus went before God and pleaded in prayer on behalf of Peter that his faith would not fail. He didn't pray deliverance from the battle. He didn't pray that Peter would not have to go through that situation. He prayed that even though he would go through that situation, even though he will stumble and fall, that the, his faith will somehow rise up inside of him and bring him back into the ways of God. And then he prophesied over him, when you return, strengthen your brothers. The Bible says a righteous man may fall seven times, but he gets back up. Look at your neighbor and say, get back up. That was the mercy of God. God restored him. He became a mighty man of God. And millions upon millions upon millions have been saved through his ministry. Even today, the words that he preached and the words that he spoke and the deeds that he did that are recorded in the Bible bless us today. He was an apostle that carried the good news that Jesus is alive to the nations. Amen. My question today is, is someone praying for you? And are you praying for someone else? As a believer, one of our primary things to do is to pray for one another. Is someone praying for you? And are you praying for someone else? I need to share this testimony. In February of 2017, I was in Uganda on my way to go do a crusade. We had a terrible accident, and it was in the outskirts of Uganda. And a mob rose up and surrounded the vehicle. And I had already known some of the, the, the justice that happens over there. There's not going to the court system and all that and, and putting people in prison. It, it's, it's, it's justice right there on the streets. And I've seen that firsthand when I travel in Africa. So I knew that <clears throat> what we were going through there was no way out. I grabbed a hold of my phone to message my wife before the mob pulled me out. And as I messaged her, I said, call the embassy. There was an accident. And I felt God's peace in the middle of that car, in the middle of that van. Two minutes later, the military arrives and escorts me out. The Lord spared my life. I would not be here today but because of the prayers of my wife and the leaders of this church, the Lord sent angels to deliver me. On Wednesday night, this happened on a Thursday morning. In Africa, in Uganda, they're about seven hours ahead of us. My wife preached on a Wednesday night, and after the service... She called the leaders to prayer, not knowing anything that was going on in Africa, just knowing that I was there. <clears throat> and she called the leaders, and they were just talking about some of the things of the church, and the Spirit of God came in and began to stir them into prayer. 
So they began to pray. They started at 9 and they finished at midnight before they felt the release to stop praying. I looked at the, the time. The exact moment that they were praying was the exact moment I was going through that situation in Uganda. The Lord stirred them to pray for their pastor. Are you praying for one another? And is someone praying for you? See, even though that was a difficult situation and that was, that was tough, you know, I wouldn't want anybody to go through that. But how many know that God has a way of turning these things around into a blessing? I was being escorted from the village in the outskirts of, of uh, Kapala, and uh, the police woman that was driving me, she was a Muslim woman, and she had two other, uh, there was two other men in the back seat, and Uganda had gone through a severe drought. We had been praying for good weather because it was an open air crusade that we were going to preach at. But because of all that happened, I already knew that God was not going to want us to go forward, forward with the crusade. So I looked at the, at the landscape and I saw all these trees and all this vegetation just dying, dried out. And if you understand Uganda, Uganda is a very tropical con country. Most of their trees are green and lively, and, but everything was drying out and dying. And I'm talking to the, the policewoman. I said, how long has this drought been going on? And she said, oh, it's a very long time. It's all over Uganda, all over Kenya, all over Tanzania. It's impacting these three nations. And I, and I, I, I told her, I said, I'm going to start praying that God will, will send rain to remove this drought. And she's a Muslim woman. She said, your God can't do it. I said, my God can make it rain. Your God can't do that. I don't believe that your God could do it. And I looked at her, I said, God is going to send so much rain. My Jesus is going to send so much rain. By this time next week, you're going to know that a miracle took place and my Jesus is real and he answers with power. I began to speak to the, star, to the clouds. In the name of Jesus, I command the rain to come. In Jesus' name, wipe out this drought over this nation in Jesus' name. Later that night, the Lord told me to leave. I'm at the airport in, um, in, uh, in Tebe, Uganda, at 4 a.m. in the morning. Before I got on the plane, I started feeling raindrops. And then it started to rain. Go and put that image on the screen, if you can, guys. This was what happened. A week later, the forecast was rain, 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 rain. 80%, 80%, 80%, 40, 50%. It rained for almost 40 days. It wiped out the entire drought in the nation of Uganda where Kenya and Tanzania had to send their, their cattle and their animals across the border because that was the only place where the grass and everything was growing to keep them alive. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know that God, our God answers, answers with power? Amen. He answers with power. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go to, go to Hebrews chapter 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to get ready to pray. We're going to pray. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. It says, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testing we do. Yet he did, it, he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of grace, of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help, to help us when we need it most. Jesus is our high priest and he, he ushers us into the throne room of grace, amen? So we have a high priest that knows what it's like to be abandoned, knows what it's like 
to be hungry, knows what it's like to be in pain. We're not talking about God who did not, we're not talking about the, our Heavenly Father that did not know what it was like to be in flesh. We're talking about Jesus, the one, our Lord and Savior, who came as a man and went through all the temptation, but yet overcame every single one of them and was without sin. So he, he sympathizes with us. He knows what you are going through, amen? And the Bible says that when we pray, we can enter into the throne room of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in our time of need. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready to pray. What is prayer? Number one, prayer is speaking to your heavenly Father. We are praying, we are speaking to our Heavenly Father. We're not speaking just to God. He is our Heavenly Father. In other words, we have relationship because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number two, prayer is spiritual. Yes, we do things in the physical. Yes, we speak words in the physical. But we are, we are in the spirit when we pray. Prayer is spiritual. Number three, prayer is entering heaven to the throne room of grace to receive mercy and find grace when we need it. How many of you need God's mercy operating in your life? How many of you need to find grace for what we need? The difference between the two is grace is everything Jesus has already paid the price for you. You don't need to find mercy for, for uh, salvation. Jesus has paid the price, amen. He is the mercy of God given to you, amen. But when I'm praying for someone that has a need, when I'm lifting up my brother or my sister or someone or this world, I'm, Father, have mercy upon them. I've been praying over, over France and all the, the battles and all the turmoil that's happening in that nation. I'm like, Father, have mercy upon them. I'm praying over Ukraine and Russia. Father, have mercy upon them. I'm praying over our government and our nation. Father, have mercy upon us. Amen. Hallelujah. So those are the, the three aspects of prayer. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 6. I'm teaching you, but then I'm going, we're going to pray together. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. We're going to go through these scriptures pretty quick. It says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. So praying is not just with our, our normal words. We pray in our natural language, but we also pray being led by the Holy Ghost. We pray in tongues. We pray in the Spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. People are like, what did you just say? I don't know. God has not given me interpretation, but I know that when I'm praying, I'm praying from the Spirit of God inside of me to the very ear of my Heavenly Father. And you can pray in the Spirit too. I want you to point at your neighbor and say, you can pray in the Spirit too. And then look at your other neighbor and say, today you will pray in the Spirit. Romans 8 verse 26. It says, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we do not know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. So the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. If you missed this message and you need to, to recap, we sell the CDs for $29.95 after service. No, we'll put it online as fast as we can on YouTube and all the, and our website too. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13 says, So anyone who speaks in tongues, say that's me, should pray also for the ability to interpret what has been said. For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying, but I don't understand what I'm saying. Well then, what shall I do? I will pray in the Spirit, and I will also pray in words I understand. I will sing in the Spirit, and I will also sing in words I understand. So we pray in both realms. We pray in our natural language, and we pray in the Spirit as well. Say, I will pray 
in the spirit. Hallelujah. Say it again. I will pray in the spirit. Yes, you. So the Bible says that the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. We pray in tongues and we pray with understanding. Amen. Uh, that's very important. I've been in churches that when we pray, they'll, they'll say, let's pray. Or I'll say, I'll, let's pray. And when I start praying, everyone starts shouting prayers. And, you know, I'm praying a blessing over them or asking God to do something in their life. And as I'm speaking, they're there. Yes, Lord, I want you to do this. And, and they're speaking over me. In other words, they can't hear me. So there's no agreement. There's no faith. Amen. If you're going to pray for me and we're praying together, I'm not going to be loud. I'm going to be listening. Because I want to know whether I'm going to say amen to that prayer or say, Lord, let those words not come to pass in Jesus' name. Some people's prayers are pretty crazy. I'm just letting you know. Amen. And so we, want, we also want to let the Holy Ghost lead us in that area. The Bible talks about how the Holy Spirit will help you pray. So it's important that we yield ourselves to the Spirit of God and let him lead us and help us to pray. As I was getting my hair cut, I was yielding myself to the desires of God. So I was praying in the Spirit as the Spirit of God was leading me. Amen? And so it's important that we work together with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Go with me to James chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. James chapter 5, verse 16. It says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayers of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your prayers carry power. They will produce wonderful results. This past uh, Wednesday, no, actually it was, it was uh, Friday, Friday morning, uh, one of the community uh, leaders came by to the church and uh, we, were, we were talking about the future, having some coffee. And uh, she had not been here in a while, um, but I knew the youth were here praying so as soon as she came in, I brought her in here, and I asked the teens, I said, hey, would you guys lay hands upon her and pray over her? And they all gathered around and began to pray whatever the Spirit of God was leading them to pray. Amen. No one gave them a script. Nobody said what they needed to say. But all I could tell you is that after they finished praying, that woman, that leader, that, that, that person being used by God to to shape and change this community was blessed she was crying and thanking god for those prayers amen the earnest prayers of the righteous availeth much it produces wonderful results amen hear this very very clear praying people are never defeated people who pray god fights their battles 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. We pray for everyone. We intercede in other words, we stand in the gap. We, we, we strengthen and we, we walk with them. On, we, walk, we present their, their needs before God on their behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why it's so important that we pray for one another. And also we desire others to pray for us. Amen. How do we, how do we get people to pray for us? We pray for others first. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The Bible describes in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 that those that gave, that it stirred up thanksgiving unto God and that the people that received their gifts began to pray for those who had given. And the Bible declares it a wonderful gift. I tell you, don't consider prayers as just 
trivial. When you know there's a person that has a walk with God and you know that they're praying for you, you should be extremely blessed and thankful. Amen. Because God will hear the, their prayers. When I desire the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit to pray in tongues, and I've shared this testimony, but it's my testimony, so I can share it as many times as I want. If you heard it already, laugh at the parts you're supposed to laugh at, clap at the parts you're supposed to clap at, and enjoy it. I was going to Bible school, and they gave me a, a, a form to fill out, and one of the questions was, are you baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence to speak in tongues? Now, here I am, the son of, of Carlos Ortiz, the great pastor, and I knew I couldn't pray in tongues. I had been touched by God many times, but I could never pray in tongues. And, uh, you know, I didn't know what to do. And I figured you can't lie in your Bible application, Bible school application. You know, <laughs> I wanted to say yes to avoid embarrassment, but, but I, I just left it blank and didn't answer, didn't answer it. So I got desperate. I did what every strong Puerto Rican man would do in my situation. I called my mama. And I told my mom, I said, Mom, I, I can't pray in tongues, and, and I need to pray, you know, they ask in this application, and I'm ashamed. And, and my mother said, Kevin, you've been touched by the Holy Ghost, you can pray. Just use your faith. Look at your neighbor and say, use your faith. And so I went, that night I, I, I was in, alone in a hotel room, and I stood on the bed, and I talked to God. I said, God, my mom says I could pray in tongues. I didn't think he would listen to me, but I knew he listened to her. And so by faith, I step out, and I just begin to step out, and I begin to pray in the Spirit. The Lord filled my mouth, and I began to pray in, the, in, in my heavenly language, amen? Hallelujah. I couldn't, now you can't keep me shut. I'll pray in the Spirit all times, amen? Hallelujah. You can receive the same way you receive salvation, the same way you can pray in your heavenly language. Amen. Hallelujah. In just a moment, we're going to pray for those that want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I want to give you a challenge today. Amen. Are you with me? I want to challenge you. This is, a, yes, this is a 4th of July week. Amen. We're going to celebrate the freedom uh, of, of this nation. But every day we celebrate the freedom that we have in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I want to give you a challenge. Amen. Number one, I want you to pray for three people. I want you to write down three people's names, and I want you to pray for them every day. Don't look for the religious. Don't look for those, oh, they go to church, I'll pray for them. Look for those sinner. Look for those that need God, amen. Look for those that are going through issues that, need, that they need God's mercy upon their life, amen. Let the Holy Spirit lead you, amen. It might be your uncle, it might be your brother, it might be a co-worker, but three people, three people, and pray for them. Amen? How many can agree that to, to praying for three peop those three people every day this week? Let me see your hands. Praise God. And here's the second part. I want you to tell them that you have prayed for them. Don't tell them now, but as you begin to pray for them, I want you to give them a call or, or take them out for coffee and just let them know that God told you to pray for them. Amen? They're going to be so blessed. As you yield yourself to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will speak to you about certain things in their life that need to be prayed for. The Holy Spirit will start speaking to you about declaring things into their future, praying for their children, praying for their family, praying for their business. Let the Holy Ghost use you. One of the first things I said is prayer is spiritual. And as we pray, being led by the Holy Ghost, God is going to change things in the spirit. And as God changes those things in the spirit, the world will see it happen in the natural as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you do that for us? Will you pray for three people? Amen. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead and close your Bibles and stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. I see prayer warriors rising up in this place today. Mighty men and women of God. 
and the outside might not look like much, but on the, on the inside, in the spirit, that's a giant in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a prayer warrior. Come on, say it again. I'm a prayer warrior. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How many of you had grandmas that prayed for you? Let me see your hands. When grandma grabbed your hand and said, let me pray for you, these weren't little prayers. They weren't like, you know, God, whatever you feel like doing for them, God. No, but when they grabbed their hand, they began to pray all of heaven's blessings upon you. They began to curse every work of the devil. They began to speak into your future and declare your children blessed. They begin to summon all of the, the, the power and the glory of heaven to be released upon your life because you are a son of God. When your mom, grandma blessed you, you felt blessed. I believe God's going to use you to bless people that way as well. Close your eyes for a moment. Before you could have authority and power to change the future in the lives of others, you must have a, a new life. You must be born again. You must be a child of God. Jesus paid the price for all your sins at the cross of Calvary. And if you will commit your life to the Lord and ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, by his blood, all your sins will be forgiven. He will wipe away the past and he will give you a hope and a future. He will send the Holy Spirit to come live inside of you. And the Spirit of God will teach you how to live a life of victory. This is what it means to be born again. Not be born of the flesh, but to be born of the Spirit. And it's a simple prayer. It's a simple prayer of confession and a declaration to live for the Lord. And if you will call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved today. If that's you, my friend, and you want to be born again, you want to serve the Lord, you want, to be, you want to be a child of God, when I count to three, I want you to lift up your right hand, and we'll pray together the prayer of salvation. Maybe you have given your heart to God, but you're falling away, and you know you're not living right with him. But I want to tell you, the Bible says that if you will confess your sins, he's faithful just to forgive you every single time and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You can always come on back. You can always rededicate your life to God. He will cleanse you. He will change you. There's no reason you should stay outside of the presence of the Lord. If that's you, my friend, if you want to dedicate your life to God or rededicate your life to Jesus, on the count of three, lift up your right hand, and we'll pray together. This is your time. This is your moment. If you want to give your life to Jesus, on the count of three, lift up your right hand. One, two, three. Lift it up wherever you're at. God bless you. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, my friend. God bless you, my friend. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, my friend. Praise God. Hallelujah. Many hands have come up. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You go and put your hands down. I want, I want all those that lift up their hands to come and meet me at this altar and let's pray together. Come wherever you're at. Come, my friend. Come. If you want to bring your family, come. But come to this altar. Hallelujah. Come on. Give God praise. Amen. Welcome, man. Welcome, brother. Let me stand right here. God bless you. Welcome. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Put your hands together for the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, bro. God bless you, sir. Welcome. Hi. Good to see you. Amen. God bless you, bro. Love you, my friend. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on over. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, bro. God bless you. Good to see you. Is that your brother? Awesome. Praise God. Wow. I, I got to shake everybody's hand. Amen. God bless you, bro. Welcome. Welcome. Bless you, buddy. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother. Welcome. 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 Amen. Good to see you. God bless you. God bless you. Good to see you. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Wow. God loves you. God loves you very much. Hallelujah. I want to just, just, I need to tell you, your future is going to change from this moment. 
Everyone that is in Christ, the Bible says that has received every spiritual blessing. For a long time, the enemy's been operating, going from one curse to after another curse, things not working right, having no hope, no future. But as we say this prayer, your sins will be washed away. No more guilt, no more shame, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You will be made holy because of his blood. And the very Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, is going to come and live inside of you. He will teach you, he'll raise you up, and he will always be there to answer and give you direction. Amen. From this moment forward, you'll never walk by yourself again, but God will be with you. Amen? So I want you to say this prayer out loud. We're going to talk to God. And as we say this prayer, the hand of God's going to come upon you and do that work. Close your eyes. Repeat this prayer out loud with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come inside my heart be my Lord and Savior I give you my life fill me with your Holy Spirit teach me your ways use me for your glory I believe that I'm born again I'm a child of God I believe in you Jesus Thank you for saving me. Use me for your glory. I declare that I'm born again. I'm a child of God. And I am saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything of yesterday... All the things that we're ashamed of yesterday, I want to let you know that the blood of Jesus has washed all your sins away. And now you have a hope and a future in him. He's going to use you for his glory. He's going to teach you his ways. The Holy Ghost will teach you. Amen. I thank God that God gives you pastors like myself. I want to, I want to, I want to get to know all of you. I want to be able to teach you the things of God and, and pray with you. You know, we're, gr we're growing. Amen. We're growing. You know, you might be like this today, but you're going to be tall tomorrow. You're growing. Well, in the spirit, the same way. You might be where you are right now, born, brand new, amen. But you're going to grow in the spirit, and God's going to use you for his glory, amen. Just close your eyes. If you can, lift up your hands to heaven. I want to pray a blessing over you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for allowing me to be a pastor and a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I present before you, Father your sons and your daughters, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you bless them with every spiritual blessing. And so we break every curse off of their life and we declare the blessings of the Lord upon them, Father God. Lord, answer with power as they cry out to you. Holy Spirit, touch them. Speak to them. Let them never be the same again. I bless her right now in the name of Jesus. I bless my friend right now in the name of Jesus. I bless my sister right now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God, that they shall live for you all the days of their life. Lord, answer their prayers as they cry out to you, Father God. Teach them your ways. Give them, a rev give them revelation and word. In fill their hearts with your word, Father God, so they will know your ways. I bless my sister. In Jesus' name, receive the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for my friend. Thank you, Lord, for new beginnings, Father God. We bless them right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I bless my brother right now. Thank you, Father. You're raising him up to be a mighty man of God. A mighty man of God in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. They're never the same. Never the same. Every curse, every brokenness, I remove it right now in the name of Jesus. And I release the blessing of heaven upon them in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, I bless my sister. In Jesus' name, I bless my brother. In Jesus' name, never the same. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father God, for great peace. Great peace in Jesus' name.
in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Lord we bless them right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah church I want you just to grab the hand of the person next to you and begin to pray begin to pray for our brothers and our sisters here at this altar I want them to know that they have a church that will pray for them I want you to pray for their children I want you to pray for their future I want you to pray for for their life pray for their finances pray for their health in Jesus name father bless your people father God let that your hand of blessing be upon them father God let them hear Lord let them hear your voice father God as they cry out to you father God I thank you father that your spirit is going into their homes right now in the name of Jesus that the very atmosphere of their home will be transformed into an atmosphere of the glory of God we bless our brothers we bless our sisters in the mighty name of Jesus Holy Spirit fill them to the overflow in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus we give you all the praise we give you all the glory hallelujah thank you Lord hallelujah amen 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 can we give God praise amen <laughs> guys I bless you Vanessa do, would you like to say something over them yeah if you guys can if you guys can just go with Vanessa Vanessa is an awesome woman of God she's just gonna talk a moment with you and just encourage you I want to get to know you guys more this is your house you're always welcome amen this is your place amen if you ever find yourself and you're like man I really wish there's someone I could talk to that will pray for me I'm here she's there all our pastors all our ministers we're here for you amen we love you and we are honored to pray with you amen oh pastor you don't know my stuff trust me Hollywood should talk to me I got stories amen but I know God will do a, is going to do a great work and I'm so excited about your future amen and I celebrate what the Lord has done and uh, man congratulations welcome to the kingdom of heaven amen can you go with my sister and she talk to you Vanessa before you all go with me I need to just tell you all what I saw in the spirit before you came up I saw 20 people bound in rope but I saw Jesus coming and setting you free. So I wanna let you know, as you came up today, whatever had you bound, you are now free. Never, never, never the same. Awesome, praise God, amen. Hallelujah, Vanessa, are you gonna spend time to talk to them? If you could just follow Vanessa, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Never the same in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Amen. Let's see. What time is it? Amen. I got six minutes. I want you to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want you just to begin to pray in your own natural language pray for those you know maybe you don't have the three that you want God that God wants you to pray for yet to be, begin to ask the father to show you their names and show you where to pray for amen so just lift up your hands to heaven and I want you to begin to pray with your own natural words in Jesus name father we come before you together as a family father God come on begin to pray your own words don't just listen to me pray in your own words hallelujah father speak to your people speak to your people father God I thank you, Father God, that you're speaking to them about who to pray for in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Speak it out in Jesus' name. Lord, speak to us, Lord. Show me who to pray for in Jesus' name. Lord, I yield myself to you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Use me to pray. Father, I pray for a spirit of prayer to come upon this church and upon this congregation, that you will stir us up 24 hours a day, all the time, praying for one another, that we will not wait for a church service to pray, but we will pray in our home, in our work, in our car, in the, in the school, wherever we are at. We will be people that pray, people that will change the course of history because of the prayers of the saints, Father God. I yield myself to you, Lord, to be used by you. In Jesus' mighty name, we yield ourselves to to you to be used by you in Jesus name hallelujah amen amen now let's pray in the spirit amen look at your neighbor say you could do it 
It's not you, it's the Holy Ghost that does it through you. And you might say, well, I've never prayed in the Holy Ghost. Just make noise. Show God that you're serious about it. Peter saw Jesus walking on the water. He said, can I come? Jesus said, come. He got out of the boat, walked on the water. He began to sink when he began to look at the waves. Jesus picked them up and helped them back to walking on the water. That's what the Lord is going to do for you today, amen. He's going to help you, but he needs you to come out of the boat, amen, in Jesus' name. Grab the hand of the person next to you. I'm going to pray for the Spirit of God to baptize you with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I believe today you're going to pray in the Holy Ghost, amen. Say, I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your people. Lord, I thank you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, you see the hearts and the desires of your people. Holy Ghost, come upon them. Help them to pray. Baptize them with power. Baptize them in the Spirit so they can pray in their heavenly language right now. In Jesus' name, we release the presence of God upon you. We release the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Now begin to pray in your heavenly language. Begin to speak it out loud. In Jesus' name. Ronde bebe se de baraba kande raba randa masana mama se de boro boso rama satara let's lift up the, the, the music lift up the music she karama sande rande karama na mane de boro ne mane na mane mane shana mane reke de boro boso de bo soro bo she karama come on go deeper go deeper hallelujah say de bo don't stay quiet just speak out speak it out in the name of jesus si karamo sone me de bakande de boro de boso ronde be ke de barama se de boro Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now give God a loud praise. Give him a loud praise. Give him a loud praise. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. This is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. The Lord's stirring you up to walk in the Spirit like never before. You're going to start seeing things you've never seen before because the Lord is stirring your heart. You're going to see these people and God's going to literally say, hey, that person, I want you to pray for them. Amen. And be, be like I was in that chair. I wasn't, gonna, I wasn't thinking, okay, I'll wait until this person, and then I'll do. No. I just start praying my own. Amen. They don't have to know. They don't have to know. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. You don't got to know. You don't got to know. Hallelujah. Things are going to happen in the spirit. Things are going to happen in the spirit. Things are going to happen in the spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says as the days of Noah, so shall the end be. And it talks about at the end, there's a lot of persecution and trouble and things that are happening. There are problems that are coming up that there are no answers to. No answers to. But we have the answer. His name is Jesus. And we're going to walk in the Spirit. And as we walk in the Spirit, God is going to deliver us. God's going to give us victory. And God's going to use us to bless others. Amen. Hallelujah. You can never lose when you walk in the Holy Ghost. Amen. There's this one woman that she wanted to pray in the Holy Ghost so bad. Came many times for praying. We prayed over her. She never spoke in tongues. And she began to think, there's something wrong with me. God, something wrong with me? Even my friend who just started coming to church started praying in tongues and not had And one morning she woke up, she poured herself a bowl of cereal, get it ready for work, and the hand of the Spirit came upon her and she began to pray in the Holy Ghost. She couldn't stop. She said, God, I gotta go to work. But she had the victory. Amen. I want to encourage you this week, walk on water. Just keep, out, keep stepping out of faith. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Even if you're not praying in the Spirit yet, watch what the Holy Ghost would do. Just step out of faith. Just watch what the Holy Ghost would do. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God's good. This afternoon, we're going to have a picnic, 6.30. I plan on eating all of your food. They're going to have food and all that, but if you like to bring food, they're, you know, do cookout and all that. We're going to enjoy each other. And we're going to uh, think we're going to have some games going on as well. If I play against you and you lose, don't cry. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you guys so much. I, I miss you all. I, I really wish we would just go, go, go. Because there's so much glory in this house. We have a conference coming up in two weeks, Holy Spirit Fire Conference. It's going to be powerful, mighty men of God, one man of God. The Lord's used them to build over 1,100 churches, and he's one of our guest speakers. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands to heaven. Let me pray as we dismiss. Father, thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for speaking to us. Lord, let this week be a week of prayer. Remind us the very first moments of the day as we go before you, Father God, that you will, we will pray for our brothers and our sisters and that our prayer life will go to the next level. And Father, I thank you that as we cry out to you, you hear and you respond with power. Bless your people, Father God. Let this week and let this 4th of July be one of the greatest 4th of Julys they've ever had. We bless them right now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. If you need prayer or would like to talk, I'll be here at the altar. Some of our ministers will be here as well. But thank you guys for coming to church. Amen. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you tonight at 630. Let's have a good time. Amen. God bless. You.